Hi all, this is Chris Gerald at Everyday VBA. In this video we're going to be looking at ranges. Now what is a range? Now if you've been using Excel for an extended amount of time, you've used ranges a lot. You just don't know that you've used them. Now for example, if we were to come in here and we were to select an area, that is a selected range. Now the other thing that you could do, which you've probably done, if we had a list of numbers and we added those up, I hit Alt F11 there, it's one of my favorite tricks right there. Um, that J5 to J7, that is a range. We've passed a range to that function, and that function's, in this case, its only objective is to add every number within that range up, and that's what it's done. So, how do you do that in code, and how is it, um, how do you use them, what do you do with them? Well, the first thing you're going to do is hit Alt F11 which is going to open up your Visual Basic Editor. You can also get there uh, via your de developer ribbon um, or also I think it's data and macros. That's the other way to get there. We already have a module. If you don't have one, you're going to click on here. You're going to click on module. It's going to come up here. You're going to double click on that. It's going to open it up. So, sub, we're going to call range list, call it whatever we want. Um, that needs to be a single word. That's going to be our macro name. Um, so what is a range? Now, a range is actually an object. Now, all an object means is it's 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 a piece of code, but it or it's a piece of um, code is the wrong word. It's a kind of like a bucket. It's like a pail. It's something that care, holds different data, and that's what that's what a a range is. And the reason it's not a single piece is because you can do different things to it. It's not just a number. So for example, we set up a variable. That variable would have a single um, set of information that you could put in that variable. Now a range, as you know, can have different properties, right? It can have a border around it. It can have a font that's bolded. It could have um, you could have a different color. There's lots of different properties and different methods that you can use for a range. So uh, the easiest thing to understand ranges is just um, actually to come in here and if you click on something it's going to tell you what the range is and the range comes in right there. Um, now it's going to give you, um, it doesn't give you the entire range, we could actually pull that information out and this, this, the context, the, the syntax, uh, I said context, huh, that's funny, the syntax is simply range and then whatever your um, range is. So for example this is A1, I'm just going to use select here if I hit F8, it's going to run through this one time, um, and it's going to select A1. You'll notice it did, um, and that is selected. So we're going to do. That's how you select. That, that's how you would select a single cell. Now, some something to keep in mind is that ranges do have cells. So, and I'll show you that real quick. But if we want range A1 to C10. And we selected this, and we. I'm just going to drag this up here, this right here. Hit F8, and it's going to select that range. Now, you can with that range, you can actually change the font. So, for example, if we wanted to go range, um, like for example, if I wanted to change range, what is that? C8. We range C8. Dot font dot bold equals true. Click on this. It's gonna bold. It's gonna bold that. Now you'll notice that as I was typing, it was giving me IntelliSense, and that's really a good way to kind of identify what are the different things that you can do. Um, now I did mention that ranges do have cells inside of them. So if we went range A1 C10 dot cells and I wanted to do you know I'm going to change this so it makes a, it so it's kind of a little bit better example we're going to go B1 to F10 so what that's going to do is it's going to select that my range is going to be F10 to B1 but I'm going to select a single cell and so I'm going to select row 2 column 2 
within that specific range. I'm going to hit select. Now, what it does, it says this is my range, and that's B1 to F10, right, which is what is selected. I want it, I want my cell down two rows, so one, two, and then over two. So when, when I click this, it's only going to select a single cell within that range. And it's important to understand that that is the way that it works. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that I've not, I've not given this a parent um, or a, a parent object. Now, the parent object of a range would be the worksheet. Um, just like the parent object of a worksheet is a workbook. Um, and just like the parent of the workbook is actually Excel itself or the application. And that's, that, that's really important because I've got two sheets here. And if I'm on, if I'm on sheet two and I come in here and I'm going to go sheets, we're going to go sheet one dot range. I'm going to go A. Now we're going to go, let's not do A, let's do C2. I'm going to put in the right syntax. And I'm going to set that equal to this is a sentence. I can't spell. S E N T N C E. So I'm going to put that this is a sentence. Now, if I'm looking at this sheet, I'm on sheet two, but I'm referencing sheet one. So when I hit this, when I drag my cursor up and I run through this single line of code, if I'm expecting to see this on this on this sheet two, it's not going to show up because I've given it, I've assigned it to the different parent. It's important to know that when you're using ranges or cells, that that you unless you are specifically identifying the parent or in this case the worksheet, it's going to just put that whatever sheet you're on. So if I hit F8. You'll notice that it, it, there was no errors, there was nothing that happened, but that information actually got put right there. Now if I got rid of this, I'm going to get rid of that sentence, and again I'm just hitting F8. Now uh, to go all the way through this you'd hit F5 and it'd run the whole thing. Um, in this case I've just taken that off. I'm going to say this is a sentence. Now because I have not identified what the parent is, whatever sentence I'm on, or whatever sheet I'm on, it's going to populate. I'm going to delete that. Notice I've changed sheets. It's going to put that right in there. So this is a really kind of a quick update or a quick um, overview of the way that the range object works. Now the range is an object and so if you're going to set it to a variable you actually, used to, you actually need to declare it as range and I can show you how to do that real quick. We're going to go declare RNG as a range <clears throat> dim RNG as range. Um, what happened there is I used a declare, um, been hanging out in SQL too long. That's how you declare your variables in SQL. Uh, in VBA, you use dim, and dim is range. And now, if we wanted to set a range, we would come in here and we would go set RNG equals to. We're just going to take this information. Now, you can't um, select when you're setting it because you're, you're not actually doing anything with that. And if, but what we can do now is if we go RNG select set. And if I hit F8, it's going to set this range. You'll notice I've got my locals window open, which throws in that, <clears throat> that object. And you'll notice that, that object has a ton of stuff that you can do with it. Um, and then when I hit RNG select, it's going to actually select that. And I could actually go through the rest of this macro and it'll be fine. But again, that's a quick 10 minute overview of the range object. Uh, you are close to getting closer and closer to becoming a VBA ninja. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the Everyday VBA channel. Hope you enjoyed.